Mexican desert at 763 miles an hour. It traveled faster than its own sound. You could not hear it until... Now that we're able to build such fearsome machines, it's our bodies that have to catch up. This is the effect of something called G-force. It's the force exerted on us by gravity when we change directions very quickly. Just like jet pilots, the maximum G's a top gun pilot can bear is about seven and a half. At high speeds, pressure pushes blood from the brain. Vision starts to blur and then unconsciousness kicks in but we are on the verge of combating G-force. This is the liquid G-suit. It responds more quickly than the air suit and pushes blood back towards the pilot's brain, allowing him to comfortably exceed the maximum of seven and a half Gs. I got a 10 is a very small grey yacht. So I say no problem at all. I would go up uh, easily 12 G's and I would still be able to talk to you. One day, we might even be able to overcome gravity altogether. Pioneering at the edges of speed barriers is only useful if that speed can be put at the disposal of everyone. For speed to be cost effective, it has to be commercially viable. When most of the known world had been explored, when travel for discovery, conquest or commerce had been all but exhausted, a new form of voyaging erupted on Earth. From voyagers, we became tourists. In 1841, an Englishman, Thomas Cook, saw a new function for the growing rail networks. He found a new way of making these expensive networks generate even more money. He invented the first package holiday. Even Cook could never have imagined how rapidly his offer of safe travel would come to dominate the world. A whole new industry suddenly blossomed, and true to human nature, so did competition. The tourist industry started by Thomas Cook is today worth almost $3.5 trillion. Tourism appeals to our basic instinct to voyage, to reach beyond the horizon, and to do so with little or no danger. Now 690 million people can mimic the pioneers of travel. This is the fast food version of exploration, and each day the industry expands. To this. And we're already crossing the next horizons. Today, man has sent his handiwork over eight billion miles from the Earth. For the past 26 years, the space probe, Voyager, has shown us things we could barely imagine. Swirling clouds on the surface of Jupiter. The perfect rings that surround Saturn. In our endeavor to reach further and faster towards the stars, 
The answer could be to go from this to this. This is Deep Space One. The secret is its engine, the ion drive. The idea for ion propulsion has been around since long before I was born. But the first time I ever heard of it was in a Star Trek episode. They're using ion propulsion. And Spock says, configuration unidentified, ion propulsion, high velocity, unique technology. And I thought, well, this is really amazing, but I'm never going to see anything like that in my lifetime. 1998, Raymond's dream became a reality. The Ion Drive has made Deep Space One the strongest traveling machine man has ever built. It can't match the raw power of a rocket. In fact, it would take the Ion Drive four days to accelerate from naught to 60. But what it lacks in power, it makes up for in stamina. Conventional rockets burn their entire fuel supply in a few minutes. The ion drive doesn't use conventional fuel. It runs on a few grams of gas. It gives the gas an electric charge and spits it out atom by atom at a phenomenal speed, creating a gentle blue haze. Once underway, the ion drive continues to accelerate. That's why Deep Space One is the fastest machine ever built, because it never stops accelerating. At the speed Deep Space One is traveling today, it would take 80,000 years to reach our nearest star, approximately the same time it took us to develop from Stone Age man. If we want to voyage to the stars, just like our ancestors crossed the continents, we will have to come up with something new. When early man first began to explore his environment, he would run into fundamental barriers whenever he came across mountains. The mountains are not easy to cross, when you're faced with a wall like these mountains around us, you've got no choice either but to go around them or over the top. Now these days it's exactly the same thing with space travel. If we're going to explore and colonize our galaxy, then the distances we have to travel are truly immense. So when it comes to space travel, we're really st still very much in the Stone Age. The answer might lie in going around the laws of physics itself. These laws prevent us traveling faster than the speed of light, but there might just be a loophole. The solution could be to comply with the speed limit, but to take a shortcut. Don't go around the obstacle, go through it. The way you can accomplish that is through a wormhole. A wormhole may sound like science fiction, but it may just be possible to create one. A wormhole is basically a tunnel that takes a shortcut through space-time. Say here to the nearest star could be connected by a very short tunnel. First, we would have to harness the power of an exploding star, a supernova. With this, we could punch a hole through space itself. As fantastic as this might sound to us now, it's not as unbelievable as this mountain tunnel would have been to our ancestors. We have survived. We have conquered our Earth because we have followed our compulsion to explore. To reach beyond the horizon, we have sometimes had to go over around or through seemingly impossible obstacles. Man's desire for knowledge is insatiable. Our basic instinct to voyage is unchanged from the time our earliest ancestors moved off from the southern tip of Africa. We need to survive. We need to satisfy our curiosity. We need to explore. The 
story of mankind's aspirations, endeavor, and innovation continues next time on Explorations.